Odiba Osi, Osi, I think. I probably messed all that up, and I am very, very sorry, but thank you for tuning in to us on Facebook Live. And so we are. I am very honored, and we are very honored to have an incredible guest on the show. And I was, and I, and I have to give a little background here because I was thinking, wow, I had one guest that I'd already confirmed, and I'm thinking, wow, we probably need another little guest. And what am I going to do for Black History Month? And and what what? Yeah, you know, I need to do something a little bit spectacular. Last week I had a little video, and then out of the blue, hey Daryl, um, out of the blue, I get a call from Gwen. And she called me to tell me that she had written this amazing commentary, and it was on Black History mm-hmm. Month and why we should celebrate. It's like, wow, thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. He just mm-hmm. brings you what you need, when you need it, and how you need it. <laughs> and so we talked for about two hours yesterday about some incredible stuff. I learned some, I learned some things about uh, Gwen that I didn't know because I know her from a business p- perspective. And uh, she has been an activist and done her thing. And, and so let me read a little bit about Mrs. Mrs. Gwen Lang Jones, a transplant of Jacksonville, Florida, and a lover of music. Gwen sang her way through high school and earned a full-time music scholarship to college. Her high school glee club had the honor to sing. She had the, her high school glee club had the honor to sing to Mary, um, uh, uh, Mathau Cloud, Bethune on Mother's Day, the Sunday prior to her death. Now, that's amazing. They were also honored as being the first high school chorus to sing on the floor of the house. And after graduation from Edwards Water College, she migrated to Los Angeles. Because her music scholarship was non-transferable, Gwen found it necessary to enter the workforce, and she later decided to re-enter school to pursue her degree in sociology. Upon graduating from Cal State University in Los Angeles, she joined the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States as a financial service representative. During her tenure, she received numerous awards and recognition for outstanding sales and managerial performance. She was voted Businesswoman of the Month of Century City by the Century City Chamber of Commerce and was recognized by Jet Magazine as the first black female district manager in the entire history of Equitable. Gwen's community involvement includes as past president of uh, Toastmasters. Is that what it is? International Toastmasters? Mistress. Mistress. And... uh, a center's international training and communication club, past vice president of Black Women's Network, past president of the California African American Museum Service Council, souvenir uh, publication chair of Daniel Freeman Hospital Auxiliary. Gwen was also awarded a certificate for outstanding community service by Mayor James Hahn. Additionally, Gwen is a member of the Delta Sigma Theta Society Sorority. Retired for 15 years, Gwen enjoys spending time with her family. She has edited a book, co-authored a book, and she is enjoying writing poetry and is currently working on a book. Gwen recently celebrated her 56th wedding anniversary with her husband, Walter. They are Mm. the proud parents of two adult children and two grandchildren, Amari and Malik. Malik. And Malik. And I want to welcome you. Wow, some of this stuff I didn't know about, and I am even more honored now than I was when, and I've known you for about three, five, five, six, longer than that. About seven or eight years. Almost ten years. I told you we were in the company of royalty. Right, you (laughs) called it, man. I told you. (laughs) So Gwen is going to... Um, read to us a commentary that she authored in 2012 on why we must celebrate 2008, why we must continue to celebrate Black History Month. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to turn it. But before you read, would you like to say anything else about yourself that wasn't covered in that wonderful bio? Well, that's, that's it? That's mostly it. Okay. Um, well, I am, as I said, from Florida. I'm from a large family mother and father, and nine siblings. Wow. Welcome to the show. Yes. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> and from the experiences that I had in Florida, there were breathtaking many of them. And one day for a black history program, which I coordinated for my church, I just decided to sort of spill my guts a little. Okay. And play, put it on paper. 
Okay. And the next year, I added a little to it, and it ended up this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's hear it then. Uh, you can you you got <coughs> Excuse me. Why we should continue to celebrate Black History Month. A philosopher once said, "If you don't know your history, you are likely to repeat it." With this in mind, I reflected on my past, a similar path for which many of you have traveled. As a little Negro girl born and raised in the South, in a cesspool of overt ignorance, bitterness, hatred, and outright racism, I was taught to love God, to do unto others as I'd have them do unto me. And I was also taught invaluable techniques for survival in such a horrid environment. Along the way, I was victimized by the colored and white water fountains, riding in the back of the bus, having to use the bathroom prior to going downtown to shop because there may not be a restroom to accommodate me, eating before leaving home or being certain to carry a sandwich along to prevent inevitable hunger pains as we could not enter a restaurant or be served at a lunch counter. Those adjustments were necessary due to the unjust laws in our America the Beautiful. Mm. I can remember so very well when I would witness blatant race, racial discrimination, express my sentiments very quietly, or swallow my pride and not reference it at all. I believe in and support our Constitution as the cornerstone of our democracy to embrace our allegiance and to hone the spirit of equality, to be ever fair, ever good, and vehemently devour hypocrisy and prohibit its inhabitants from taunting its beauty with obscure immorality. Although many of our laws have been modified to be held in high regard, there is yet an enormous amount of toxic minds that employ a reckless disregard. It has been avowed that it is no longer necessary to celebrate Black History Month or to sing the anthem, We Shall Overcome, because a black man as president shows that we have overcome. Conversely, it is my perspective as a proud black woman that the cause for the celebration will never grow old, and its significance must be fervently echoed to keep us in the fold. Perpetual racism divulges that enough is enough. But when I convey my, doc my discontent, I'm often told that I'm being a little too tough. So, for better clarification, I will articulate my rationale in rhyme. Why Black History Month should be widely respected and vigorously celebrated to the end of time. Our life's journey in the motherland allowed us a free spirit with a yearning to learn until one day formidable acts of torment forced us to enter the door of no return. Our arduous voyage to the Americas was unwelcomed indeed as determination and drive gave us a strong will to succeed. We were arrogantly dehumanized with little to no exception, and we were compelled to fulfill our duties without obvious deception. With a great sense of pride among us and a longing to sustain, we did everything in our power to simply adjust and not complain. 
the struggle made it considerably difficult for immediate adjustment, but with God's help, we forged ahead as we strived for advancement. Heartfelt degradation was applied with a, lit, with a small degree of fuss. Thus, it made our level of progress appear nil or highly oblivious. Greed and profits were the main motives in mind, and seldom was compassion displayed in kind. While honor, worth, and prestige became the order of the day, hardship was a constant and was demonstrated without fair play. The transition from stress was stressful and unbearable reality. For the survivors of the voyage experienced a senseless inequity. They were the keepers of the dream. African Americans are strong, proud people and products of a rich legacy. Therefore, we must never allow others to make us feel inferior because of their incurable jealousy. Motivation, innovation, and collaboration are descriptive of our ancestral tradition, influenced by nobility, pride, dignity, and a uniquely spiritual intuition. We are kings, queens, conquerors, and the ultimate reality, and the ultimate royalty. And we possess the fortitude to make all dreams a reality. Innately, our hearts ring out with kindness and love for our nation. To be countered by hate, anger, envy, and inhumane humiliation. Historically, we have been scorned, abused, and placed in a state of dismal isolation. We have been ignored and oftentimes forced into a mere bit brink of desolation. We were crowned with an astonishing spirituality, for our gifts blazed the trail with our individual genius and originality. We laugh, we joke, we sing, we dance, and we often clown around to be reminded daily of the ruthless institutionalized bound. Our inborn wisdom has instilled in us our strong will to innovate, while others feel an enormous need and absurd desire to emulate. The enormous contributions of blacks in these United States of America are representative of the unmitigated genius that we brought with us from Africa. We have contributed n notably to this country in all areas, education, sports, entertainment, art, science, entrepreneurship, and politics as well. Though many deemed the transformation so unfair, they decided to rebel. Numerous contributions by African Americans have been obviously recognized while others appeared absolutely ignored to crop up later as an original from where they had been intentionally stored. The truth of who we are and why we should be revered from sea to shining sea is precisely inscribed in the archives of America's written decree. Let us forget, let us forever give honor to the works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who blazed the trail for millions to follow. Langston Hughes, Joe Lewis, Ma Rainey, Dick Gregory, Oprah Winfrey, Harry Belafonte, Pearl Bailey, Althea Gibson, Bill Cosby, Malcolm X, Biddy Mason, Barbara Jordan, and Fannie Lou Hamer. Also, Colin Powell, Danny Bakewell, Jackie Robinson, Louis Farrakhan, Dinah Washington, James Weldon Johnson, Lena Horne, Denzel Washington, Magic Johnson, Marion Anderson, James Brown, Dr. Mark Dean, 
architect of the digital revolution with more than 20 patents to his credit. Maya Angelou, Michael Jackson, Jesse Jackson, Rosa Parks, Dr. Dorothy Height, and President Barack Hussein Obama, just to name a few of the incredible black heroes and sheroes and how they have profoundly impacted the history of this country. Our job to hold America accountable for equality is a most challenging one, but it must, but it remains our responsibility to do our part until our freedom is won. The time is now for all Americans to stand up for injustice and refrain from the unprecedented bitterness that has been consistently spewed around the country for the past several hundred years. We must acknowledge and support and, cur and the courage that has been demonstrated under the leadership of our capable President Barack Obama and give homage to his numerous co accomplishments that were made in a very short time, namely his focus on health care reform, housing, education, increased pay, and benefits for military personnel, and the list goes on and on. Dr. Martin Luther King once said that there is nothing in the world more dangerous than the sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity, as exhibited by some, as uttered daily from the relentless sea of bigotry by Ginrich, Limbaugh, Beck, O'Reilly, Palin, and Hannity. Their deplorable hatred epitomizes the ultimate negativity, and it connotes but a sad commentary of our country, tis of thee. Yes, the more things change, the more they remain the same. And to eradicate injustice, we must continue to stake our claim. The struggle for parity is constant due to insurmountable ignorance and frustration that gives perpetual cause for an ongoing commemoration. So, until the laws of justice are recognized and adhered to throughout our inflexible nation, let us walk together with heads held high and continue Carter G. Woodson's Black History Month celebration to be celebrated not only during the month of February on a special day, but we must pay tribute to this laudable celebration today and every day. Wow. Powerful, powerful, <laughs> powerful. Wow. Unity alone was, Yeah, that was from the heart. <laughs> from the heart. And that from was in 2008. Heart. So, boy, you had to pin that today. <laughs> wow. Same thing. The same thing. It's the exact same thing. Things but change, but gosh. they remain the same. While, while you were reading, I was thinking, hmm, Crystal and I, we need to have our names on that list. But... We're, not, we're probably not worthy. Not yet. We're not worthy. We're coming up. We're working on it. <laughs> wow. That, I, I just. That's amazing. Fantastic. Thank That's you. amazing. And, it, and it definitely, I felt it from the heart. Um, and it just, it just represents us as a people. Yes. And, and we must continue. And we must continue. Mm -hmm. and, and to uh, celebrate us as po a proud people. Exactly. And that no matter what has been thrown at us, we can't let that take away from who we really are. That's right. And, and, and the accomplishments and the accomplishments of those that came before us and those that are operating today, fighting for our cause and fighting to make sure that this world is a better place for our children. Yes, and I was about to say pass the idea on to our children. And pass the idea on to our children. Because they are our future. Exactly. And Ms. this is just amazing. Ms. Gwen, tell us a little bit about your experiences and how... You've been using that experience today with churches, organizations, to make it happen. Well, um, most recently, it was last February, 
that I got permission from my grandson, who's now seven years old. He's in second grade, but mm -hmm. when he was in first grade, I got permission from his teacher to present to the class mm. black history. Very much. And I presented inventors, because there are a whole lot of inventions. Oh, yes. And there would be no America mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if that weren't for us. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yes. For and sure. we bring so much flavor and flair mm -hmm. into what we do. And the kids in the classroom, I had, I felt so proud because my husband was with me. Our son was with me. It was his son yeah. whose class it was. Yeah. I had their undivided attention and it made me feel so good because I gave information to them. Then I asked questions of mm -hmm. each one of them to tell me something that they learned. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel so good. There was a little boy, I think he was Hispanic. And he res responded in such a profound way mm. to make me know yeah. that it had been accepted by him and understood. I hear that. And I knew when he got home, he'd have to tell his parents mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel good about when I can help spread the goodness yes. and help others feel the passion that do, should be felt. Do you still have that list of inventors? Yes. If you don't mind, if you want to share it with us, we'll be happy to put it on our website. So be more than happy More to. than everyone else will know exactly who some of those great inventors are because I don't think people have a clue. Yes. I um, really don't. I mean, the elevator, the, the traffic washing light. machine. Yes. The traffic I mean, light. Every, everything that we <laughs> use was invented by yes. us. Yes. The, the light bulb. Yes. The broom. I mean, everything to make it more convenient for us, which became a, a part of our everyday life. Exactly. Which everybody is enjoying it. You know, you know what's amazing that a lot of people don't understand, and Crystal and I, we talk about this in our workshops when we're, we're teaching entrepreneurs. A lot of people start businesses because there's a pain out there in the marketplace that we need mm -hmm. to solve. Right. Yes. We became inventors because there's pain in our communities that we needed to solve. Exactly. Like with the traffic light, for example. Oh, yes. Right. Our people were being killed. Our kids were being killed all the time because they would drive through our neighborhoods. They wouldn't stop. Exactly. That's how That's the traffic right. light got invented. That's right. And you the see broom, what I mean? because we did the work in in the on in the plantations, right. yeah. uh, the the tools that were used with the, with the blacksmiths, mm -hmm. the uh, the cotton gin in order to make the world yes. easier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so everything it was to solve a solu was a solution that? to a pain that we experienced mm -hmm. from doing excruciating back breaking exactly. work and it just really galls me when people say that black people are lazy Oh, no, we are not lazy because <laughs> there is no other nationality, other race of people that could have endured the hard no. work that we would endured no just to survive. Just to, And we weren't even being fed. We weren't clothed. We weren't fed daily meals. We got the scraps and the leftovers. So, I think it's just ignorance for people to well, say Well, that's what that. she said in, in her, is, is the ignorance is and, not knowing. And to just add to that, you mentioned George Washington Carver. Mm-hmm. Discovering the different uses of a peanut. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what is one of the greatest snacks that we have That's today? What I'm peanut, 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 the peanut, peanut butter sandwich. And what did we talk about? <laughs> hey, peanut butter sandwich. He did <laughs> buttermilk and yeah. adhesive and mayonnaise and meat tenderizer That's what I'm talking and about. metal polish and shaving cream and shoe polish. All of those are things. So, what do you think about the, the idea of creating a float in honor of George Washington Carver? I love the idea. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I love the idea. It's unfortunate. It's very expensive to have a float in the parade. Right. We I think we found but with that the collaboration that you're speaking of, it can happen. And, and that collaboration and the and the um, the uh, co uh, cooperative economics. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, the, um, the the her name is Etha that she she has she has a file. Because she's done all her research and, and her one of her goals is to reach out to all other organizations. And she said there are actually the state there are states that actually celebrate 
George Washington Carver and all of his accomplishments as an association. So she's going to reach out to them. We're going to reach out to the youth groups and, you know, create fundraisers and, and charitable, uh, the fraternities and sororities. Uh, although I think the capitals are thinking about doing their own float okay. and they're going to reach out nationally. Um, she's going to reach out to the Deltas. I believe she is. Well, we Delta. had a float. Excuse you, me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, y'all had a float. Yes, okay. our 100 yeah, In year. fact, I think they did tell me you guys had yeah. a float. I, I think that was when I asked that question. 2013. Th 13. And so um, those and then reach out to our small businesses or our businesses, our black owned businesses and let them and then they have a plaque around the float. But I think it costs uh, $250,000 therefore. Yeah. This lady had done her, she actually even spoke to the manufacturers. Right. Um, but if you, depending on how you reach out and who you reach out to um, and we have enough time to raise that money, I think that would be an amazing uh, opportunity for us as a people right. to display uh our accomplishments, and especially him, he couldn't have been any more uh, the the best person to have chosen, right? In her mind, so we're gonna see how it how it pans out. Um, I hope we can do that. So, who did you guys? Was it the the uh, the lineage of the Deltas? Is that who your float? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. We okay. were celebrating our 100th year. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I know. That was an amazing. Yeah. I had some friends that were. Uh, yeah, and you, you were actually at that time a vendor. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, the uh, yes. Uh, jury line. Right? Uh -huh. Well, I had um, my own company, Andy and Alon Enterprises. Yes. Right. And you wanted to go there. And that's how I learned yeah. so much about the Deltas. Yes. For you, because I work with you on right, exactly. how you wanted to, um, you were going to make that happen. I am just so pleased that you that you called me yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> things happen the way they're supposed they're to. They're supposed to happen. This, this is amazing, and, and it was just amazing. And, and it brings to mind, I am working. I sit on a board of an organization called the Pete Brown Junior Tennis uh, Program, and uh, we are. Um, is a program that has been in the community for well over 50, 60 years. And Pete Brown actually provided free tennis lessons to the uh, black kids and the, those in the community for Very free. And he done that. He, he had been doing that on his own. He was also a coach for, I think, LACC. But um, um, uh, Marty Woods, Coach Marty Woods, actually made it a legal, made it a legal nonprofit organization. So we're having a function in March in honor of we're sending ten of our youth, our high, our elite tennis players, to Baltimore for the 100th celebration, national celebration of the American uh, Tennis Association, which is the black association there. And we're sending these 10 kids. And so we're doing fundraisers to make that happen. So one of the things we're doing is the Living Legends Awards fundraiser breakfast brunch. Mm -hmm. And it is for the legends of tennis to pass the torch on to our children. Wonderful. And then we keep that going because in tennis as well as everything else, you know, you got Arthur Ashe, you have Althea Gibson. In fact, one of the ladies that we honored last year, she played tennis with Althea Gibson. Mm -hmm. And there's a n number of them that have been playing tennis for years and they're still playing tennis and they're in their 80s and 90s. And uh, so we want to make sure that this sport is recognized for all of the legends. You know, our children only know of Serena and Venus. I know. And, I know. Our, and then if you, in your 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know Arthur Ashe. But prior to that, you know, they don't go back further exactly. than that. So that's one of the things. So just paying homage, even in a, in a, in a sport, to our legends that, uh, that they broke color lines. Yes, they did. They broke color yes, lines. Yeah, I remember out there Gibson. You do you? From being from Florida. Yes. because She attended Florida A&M University uh -huh. with my sister. Mm -hmm. And that's where actually where, where the ATA is housed mm -hmm. in Florida. Mm -hmm. And they have a beautiful court there in Arthur Ashe Stadium. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's one of the things that we're doing in honoring those in, in, in that industry. Hey, Leo, welcome. Glad you, you stopped by on Facebook Live. I tell you, I'm going to have to, um, I, I have it in electronic. I'm going to make sure that when we clip the tape that I send this everywhere. Okay. Because that was brilliant. We got to do and that. And that was brilliant. We got to do that. And, and then I'm going to refer you to some people who need you to come out and 
recite that to them? I'll be delighted. Okay, Perfect. that's fantastic. Ms. Gwen, we want to thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> this is phenomenal. Well, thanks for Now, the that's the way black history is supposed to be celebrated. This, this is a learning <laughs> experience for me. So yeah. this is great. So and thank in, you so much. And for thank Gilbert, you for the opportunity. Gilbert grew up in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so I know you guys... Not the same as America, but you had your own trials and tribulations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we were abroad straight from the slave ship to Jamaica. So. Right. Everyone <laughs> oh, has yeah. had right. their experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are, and we have our own heroes. You know, we've got Marcus Garvey and, yes. you know, all of those fine folks. Oh, yes. So, yes, we do. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go ahead, Crystal, and take a break right now. We're at the top of the hour at 4, 402. So we'll take a quick break, two minutes, and we'll be back. And if for those of for those of you entrepreneurs who are listening, I'd like you to give us a call here on our radio station at 323-293-3375. That's 323-293-3375. This is the business zone. Thank you. And we will be back in a moment. Hello. Meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small business.